The Invincible class symbolized the fundamental changes in the British defense perception, not once but a couple times. It was also a milestone in accepting the modern stall light aircraft carrier concept. Today, we're investigating the Invincible class, the Royal Navy's short but sharp sword. The Invincible class light aircraft carriers proudly served their majesty for nearly 35 years. Initially, as the Royal Navy had done, the world saw them as simple vessels for anti-submarine warfare, shortly ASW. Some naval experts semi-condescendingly defined them as pocket carriers. Nevertheless, HMS Invincible, HMS Illustrious and HMS Ark Royal proved them they were more than that many times. The light aircraft carriers were not new. Unlike an escort carrier, which was similar in size, they were intended for higher speeds to be deployed alongside fleet carriers, not for protecting merchant ship convoys. The British Colossus and Majestic classes were the best known examples of this type. Still, initially the UK did not intend to create a new legendary light aircraft carrier. The Invincible class project began in the mid-1960s as a study for a 6,000-ton guided missile escort cruiser with helicopter carrying capability. It would complement the projected over 60,000-ton CVA-01 class fleet carriers. However, the sun had been setting on the British Empire since the end of the Second World War. The UK had lost its economic power and many overseas territories. In this new world, a large and powerful navy was unnecessary and an unbearable burden on the budget. Thus, in 1966, the CVA-01 program was cancelled. One of the remaining two large fleet carriers, HMS Eagle, would be decommissioned in 1972, while the other, HMS Ark Royal, would undergo a refit to serve until the late 1970s. So, the escort cruiser program was enlarged into a helicopter cruiser with six Sea Kings operating capability. Initially, the Royal Navy considered the design with missile gun armament on the foredeck, a large conventional central superstructure, and aviation facilities confined to a large aft flight deck and an above deck hangar. This concept was quite popular in those years. The Royal Navy had already converted two Tiger class cruisers, HMS Tiger and HMS Blake, into this configuration. France, Italy, Japan and the USSR were also operating similar ships. The Brits then decided to relocate the superstructure to the starboard side, thus allowing the flight deck to continue to the bow. So, a new term through that cruiser emerged. Some necessities paved the way for this innovation. The Audacious class fleet carriers and the Centaur class light carriers were set to be decommissioned in the late 1970s and early 1980s. So the primary role of the new ships would be to provide command, control and communications facilities for British and NATO ASW task groups operating in the GI-UK gap. A cruiser with solely helicopter operating capability would not be able to answer the threat of the Soviet bears, badgers and blinders. New surface combatants had to carry fighter jets to intercept bombers, so consequently have a full-length flight deck. The US Navy tested the sea control ship concept of Admiral Elmo Zumwalt in 1972. USS Guam performed trials with AV-8A Harriers. Even though the USA did not accept this concept afterwards, gave the Brits courage to convert the projected helicopter cruiser to a through-deck cruiser. They had already tested the Hawker P-1127 on HMS Ark Royal in 1963 and the Hawker Sidley Kestrel on HMS Bulwark in 1966. Thus, in May 1975, London authorized the maritime version of the Harrier, which was successfully developed into the Sea Harrier. In the same years, the ski jump idea was perfected. A small ramp at the forward end of the flight deck enabled the Sea Harrier to take off with an additional 680 kg payload. In 1976, the Royal Navy demanded a secondary role on the ship as a landing helicopter platform for the Royal Marines. So the second vessel was redesigned to be fitted with a third mast to provide mountings for additional communications and the interior was rearranged to accommodate troops. The UK ordered three ships between 1973 and 1978. The Royal Navy's operational planning was to keep one fully operational. A second vessel would be operational at short notice for active service, which was nominally 31 days. 
The third would be either in reserve or undergoing refit, making it capable of becoming operational quickly in the event of a crisis. The first vessel of the class, HMS Invincible, was laid down on July 20, 1973, launched on May 3, 1977, and commissioned on July 11, 1980. The aircraft carrier classification did not appear in official British documents until 1980. However, when she entered the service, the pennant number of the HMS Invincible was R05, a letter given to an aircraft carrier, not a cruiser. HMS Illustrious was laid down on October 7, 1976, launched on December 1, 1978, and commissioned on June 20, 1982. The Royal Navy originally intended to name the last ship Indomitable. It later changed it to Ark Royal. She was laid down on December 14, 1978, launched on June 1, 1981, and commissioned on November 1, 1985. The design of the Invincible class was similar to that of merchant ships, which helped reduce cost. Its waterline length beam rate was about 7, meaning it was not a high-speed naval vessel. Still, since military requirements were also considered, the engine room was designed as double-hulled and durability was improved. The Invincible class had excellent seaworthiness. It had two sets of fixed fin stabilizers to reduce pitch and roll, ensuring safe takeoff and landing operations. Its design kept pitch and roll within 5 degrees when traveling speeds at 18 knots in Sea State 7. The Invincible class had a 167.8 meter long and 13.5 meter wide flight deck. Between 1998 and 2001, all three aircraft carriers gained an extra 23 meter long and 18 meter wide flight deck area when their Sea Dwarf missile launchers were dismantled. Initially, HMS Invincible and HMS Illustrious had 7 degree ski jumps, while HMS Ark Royal had a 12 degree one since the beginning. Later, HMS Invincible and HMS Illustrious were fitted with new 12 degree and 13 degree ski jumps, respectively. The Invincible class had two 9.7 meter long and 16.7 meter wide elevators. Initially, they had no vertical support to open more space in the hangar. This arrangement, however, proved problematic since the leveling mechanism occasionally failed under load, allowing the platform to tilt about its longitudinal axis. It caused damage to the aircraft on the elevator at the time and subsequently reduced the carrier's operational effectiveness. So, they were replaced with new ones using the scissor principle. During their service times, they operated the Sea Harrier FRS-1, Sea Harrier FA-2, Harrier GR-3 and Harrier GR-7 and 9 combat aircraft and the Sea King, Lynx and Merlin helicopters. For amphibious assault roles, the Chinooks, WAH-64 Apaches and V-22 Ospreys were occasionally deployed on them. Initially, the Royal Navy planned to use 9 Sea Kings and 4 or 5 Sea Harriers on the Invincible class. After a refit based on the experiences of the Falklands War, their aircraft carrying capacity increased. In multi-mission strike and ASW roles, the carrier operated 12 Harriers alongside 10 Submarine Hunter and Airborne Early Warning Helicopters. In exclusive multi-mission strike roles, the number of combat jets increased to 18 and the number of helicopters reduced to 4. Iran was keen to acquire at least one Invincible class ship in the mid-1970s. However, this country's technical capabilities and human resources were insufficient for such an ambitious acquisition, which led to the plan's cancellation. Australia was also interested in the ship. Before the Falklands War, the acquisition of HMS Invincible was almost completed. Yet the war changed all perspectives and this plan was cancelled too. And there was always China who wanted to buy a decommissioned carrier. A businessman from Hong Kong intended to acquire at least one of the three Invincible class ships to convert it into a floating international school, but the Brits did not buy. The complement of the Invincible class was 1,051 people, including 366 aircrew. It could also carry up to 600 marines in the LPH role. The ship had a length of 209.1 meters, a beam of 36 meters and a drought of 8 meters. Its standard and fully loaded weights were 16,860 and 20,600 tons respectively. The Invincible class had four 28,000 horsepower Rolls-Royce Olympus TM3B gas turbines 
in combined gas and gas configuration. Its maximum speed was 28 knots. The Invincible class had a range of 7,000 nautical miles, in other words, 12,965 kilometers with a speed of 19 knots. Initially, the Invincible class had one twin launcher for the sea darts with a Mach 3.5 speed. This semi-active radar-guided air defense missile could be effective at a range of 40 kilometers. Its effective altitude was between 100 and 18,500 meters. The CDOT launchers were removed later to open more space for the aircraft. The original design of the carrier included MM-38 Exosay anti-ship missile launcher. Yet this plan was abandoned during the construction to reduce costs. Later, the Royal Navy considered equipping the ships with four lightweight Seawolf air defense missile launchers, but this plan was also cancelled due to budget restrictions. After the Falklands War, HMS Invincible and HMS Illustrious were fitted with two Mark 15 Phalanx close-in weapon systems, later replaced by three goalkeepers. On the other hand, HMS Ark Royal had three Phalanxes since the beginning. This 20mm six-barrel system had 4,500 rounds per minute rate of fire and 1,500 meters effective range. The goalkeeper, fitted to the first two carriers later, had a rate of fire of 4,200 rounds per minute in a maximum effective range of 3 km. The Invincible class also had two manually operated 20mm single-barrel GAM BO-1 guns with an effective range of 2,500 meters and a rate of fire of 1,000 rounds per minute. While Australia almost finalized the acquisition of HMS Invincible, Argentina landed on the Falklands Island on April 2, 1982. So, alongside HMS Hermes, she had to sail to the South Atlantic. During the Falklands War, her Sea Harriers shut down many Argentine aircraft, while her Harrier GR-3s performed crucial close air support and strike missions. Argentina claims that at least one Exosé missile fired from the Super Retendars hit HMS Invincible but has never been able to show solid proof. The Brits have denied this claim. Alongside HMS Hermes, HMS Invincible had a crucial role in the British victory. Still. The war also revealed many shortcomings. The absence of an airborne early warning aircraft had jeopardized the Naval Task Force's security against air raids. Besides, the Royal Navy had realized the threat of modern anti-ship missiles. It had also been revealed that the UK still had to be prepared for a conventional war in its overseas territories, not just against Soviet submarines. So. The air group composition of the Invincible class was rearranged, increasing the number of stalled jet fighters. The ships were fitted with close-in weapon systems and chaff launchers. The airborne early warning variants of the Sea King began to be deployed on the carriers. Since the Falklands War perfected the design and concept of light aircraft carriers with stalled jet fighters, many other nations commissioned similar vessels without hesitation afterwards. Also. The Invincible class ships fought in the Persian Gulf and the Adriatic Sea in the 1990s and 2000s. In 2000, HMS Illustrious led the task group sent to restore peace and stability to Sierra Leone. HMS Invincible, HMS Ark Royal and HMS Illustrious were decommissioned in 2005, 2011 and 2014 respectively. Until HMS Queen Elizabeth was commissioned in 2017, the Royal Navy had not operated a carrier for three years for the first time since 1918. For many, the Invincible class initially symbolized that the Brits were no longer a dominant sea power. Yet, this perception quickly changed with its successful career. These three aircraft carriers became a symbol of the UK rising again. The Invincible class ships, the Invincible warriors of the Royal Navy, were undoubtedly legends. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.